Today we're going to be answering my most asked question. What's the difference between liquid latex and wax resist? So let's glaze some pottery and talk about it. I'm going to be working on a few different pieces today to show some different techniques and application methods. And we're going to be doing spooky designs because tis the season. So what is a resist and why do we need to use it? The resist is just another word for repel. So it's essentially going to repel the glaze from the areas we apply it to. So we want to use these resists or repellents to repel the glaze to keep it off of the artwork, which is going to be the star, the center of the design. So we are in the greenware phase first. So I'm going to do my underglaze painting right now. This is going to be a ghost thumb cup and a full moon cat mug. So let's get started. Okay, so I just have my own handmade stencil from this hand-drawn design that I did. So I'm gonna start by tracing that on the mug so I know where I'm gonna put my underglaze. I don't wanna go too close to the top so there's still a place for you to drink. And I'm just using a kind of dull pencil to do a gentle mark of where I wanna go. I wish I had more hands for this part because it's kind of hard to hold down the stencil while you're drawing, but if I get close enough, I get the idea. Okay, now the hard part, my inner little cat head. That's good, I get the idea of it. I'm actually gonna carve this out now. This is not the best carving tool on the market. There are better ones. They just cost a little bit more. So for today, this is gonna be just fine. This is gonna be kind of a chubby cat, which is fine because if you know my cat Nacho, he's thick and happy. Sometimes I'll make little changes too. Like this tail looks a little bit big. Oops, I skipped, that's okay. I always say nothing has to be perfect because it's handmade. The circle though, <laughs> that's the part I get worried about. It's better to go faster sometimes. Here we go. I'm just gonna brush off the little fuzzies. And then I'm gonna start doing my underglaze. All right, so I'm just dipping into my underglazes. Let's start with orange and that will be our moon color. You need three coats of each color and I leave a little gap in my like gutter area on purpose because I want you to be able to see the natural color of the clay as like a little border outline. And if you make a mistake like that right there, don't worry, we can use our tool and dig that out again once it dries. Okay, that's it for orange. Now we'll do the cat. I'm gonna do a black cat. I think black cats are one of the prettiest colors. I really wanna get a black cat someday, but my gray cat loves being an only child. So for the moment, I just can dream about black cats. That looks pretty good. I'm gonna dig out my little mistakes. All right, two more coats and then that's ready to go in the kiln for its bisque firing. Now it's time for our ghost thumb cup. So I'm gonna dip into my white underglaze. I'm gonna do a pretty simple ghost. I just do a round shape with three squiggles at the bottom, just like that. And I'm gonna repeat this all around the thumb cup. Gorgeous. I'm gonna do two more coats of white and then I'll come back and show you the black eyeballs. I'm gonna use a hair dryer just to speed up the drying process. I'm just gonna do it on the thumb cup because there's no handle that's at risk of getting too dry and cracking. So I'll just do low on cool and speed it up. Now it's time to do the eyeballs. It's okay if the whole ghost isn't perfectly dry, just as long as where you're gonna put the eyes is dry enough. Okay, this is the hardest part. I'm using my finest brush for this. And here we go. So cute. I'm very much the kind of person who loves like the idea of spooky things, but I'm actually like terrified of real life ghosts. I prefer these cute ghosts. I can't really watch scary movies. I think it's fun, but then I have really bad nightmares. <laughs> I'm like a little kid when it comes to Halloween. Gorgeous. All right, 
and this ghosty thumb cup is ready to dry out and then go in for its bisque firing. So firstly, what is liquid latex? Liquid latex is a liquefied rubber and it's often used for special effects in body art. I do want to address this situation. Um, there's a lot of different brands, but this one happens to be used for body art, but we're going to use it for pottery today. I just pour some out into a little dish. We're going to be using liquid latex for this one specifically because I want to be able to cover this design to protect it when I dip it in my white glaze. And then also I want to be able to peel off the liquid latex so that I can apply a clear coat over the design before we're firing it. I have my water close by because I am going to be putting my brush in the water anytime I'm not actively painting because this will stay on your brush forever. And be very careful that this does not get on your clothes because it will never ever come out. So you just wanna make sure that you do a thick enough coat so that when you go to pull it off, it's strong enough and won't break. I'm gonna do liquid latex in my little gutter that I did around the design as well. And that's because I do want to have a little outline in the natural color of the mug. So we are painting on bisque ware. This mug has been fired once and now it's ready for this application. We can't apply liquid latex any earlier because it has to be fired to protect the underglaze. Right now, this underglaze isn't gonna go anywhere and it's totally safe to be painted on by the liquid latex. It won't affect it at all when I go to pull it off. Woo! Did you see that drip? So one of the things I like about liquid latex is if you do make a mistake, it's okay. You can easily peel it off once it dries and continue on with your glazing process. They make this in a few different colors um, and I really like that it's tinted so that you can see where you're painting. It makes it really easy. I mean, a little less easy now that I'm on the black part of the cap, but I think you get the idea. Okay, down to the last little bit of the tail. And then I'm gonna let this dry. It does need some dry time before you go in to put glaze on top of it. You'll be able to tell because it won't be tacky anymore. You can tap on it with your finger to see when it's dry. And you can also see the color will change. Like right now it's a light gray. When it's dry, it'll be that black color. <laughs> Nacho. All right, it's time to let this dry and then we are gonna work on the ghost thumb cup. For the ghost thumb cup, I'm gonna use wax resist and this is a water-based coating. All right, so I'm dipping into my wax resist and similar to the liquid latex, you do wanna dunk it in water when you're not using your brush so it doesn't solidify on your brush. But basically it's super easy to apply and paint on. I'm gonna leave a little bit of an outline around my ghost because I want the natural color of the clay to show through. You can go in much tighter and more detailed if you want to just cover the ghost itself. But basically, I'm working to cover this ghost design because I'm gonna put black glaze on the rest of the thumb cup and I want to keep these ghosts protected and safe. And this has been bisque fired. So the underglaze is nice and stable. It's not gonna go anywhere. It's stuck on there. So what's really great about wax is it's gonna burn off in the kiln. So after this, I don't need to remove it. It's totally fine. It's just gonna evaporate in the kiln. One of the tricky things about wax resist is you really have to pay attention to where you're painting. It's a little hard to see that it's clear. And also, if you make a mistake, it's incredibly hard to remove the wax resist without refiring it at the bisque cone. So you just have to paint very carefully and intentionally. I am gonna give this dry time as well before I put on the black glaze. 
So now what I'm gonna do is use another type of wax, and this is paraffin wax, and I'm gonna dip the bottoms in it so that there will be no glaze on the bottom of the pieces and they will not stick to my kiln shelves when I go to do the glaze firing. All right, so I have my glossy white glaze here. I'm gonna mix it up and then we're gonna dip the mug into the glaze. I'm gonna use my tongs to hold and then I have a brush ready to touch up the spots where my tongs have held. Here we go. And you can see that the liquid latex is already starting to repel the white glaze. I'm just gonna help it out with a damp sponge and brush off the extra glaze so that when, it, when I go to peel it, it's not messy. This is my favorite part. I know it's a lot of your favorite parts because it is so satisfying. I use an X-Acto knife just to get myself started so that I can get myself a little pull tab. Don't worry, the X-Acto knife will not hurt the artwork. All right, ready? Good start. This is why I was saying make sure it's thick enough. Here, we're gonna pull it off now. Gorgeous. See, our design is intact. And now I'll be able to paint on the clear glaze. And that's why we use the liquid latex so that we could still access this part of the artwork at this point. Now that we have the liquid latex peeled off, I'm gonna dip into my clear glaze and cover the design so that this will be shiny once it's fired. And remember, we didn't wanna use the wax resist because that would have sealed off our design completely and we wouldn't be able to access it now with the clear coat. So that's why I really like liquid latex for designs like this. Again, this is gonna need three coats and I try to do them not too thick because I've noticed sometimes clear can get a little bit bubbly if you do it too thick. And I'm so glad I waxed my bottom because I can just quickly sponge off any remaining glaze. All right, after three coats, this is ready for its final glaze firing. So I'm gonna dip into my matte black glaze here. And just to show a different method, we're just gonna hand paint this on. Of course, you can dip glaze as well. So I'm gonna paint over the ghost and it's amazing. It just totally repels the glaze. So our ghost design is safe. At the end, I'll come in with a sponge and just clean up the wax. If it still has these little droplets, I'll just remove that. But then the wax is gonna evaporate in the kiln, so we don't need to remove it. Again, this will need three coats just because we are applying by brush. I'm a little bit of a messy glazer, but that's why I use things like the wax at the bottom because I'm gonna have a perfectly crisp line. And then two more coats and then I will wipe off any remaining glaze that's on the wax. All right, now I'm just gonna wipe off the extra little glaze droplets on the wax. It comes off nice and easy. And there we go. We can kind of get an idea of what it'll look like after it's fired. This is ready to go in the kiln for the glaze firing, which is the final step. All right, I'm so excited to show you the results. We have our ghost thumb cup. And for this style, we use the wax resist. And the ghosts are just in a matte finish, which I like for this design, because this is kind of a matte black. So they look really good together. And then for the full moon cat mug, remember we use the liquid latex. I peeled it off and then I did the clear coat. So this is glossy for the design and glossy white. So liquid latex pros, super easy to apply, really easy to take off if you make a mistake and very satisfying to peel off, which is just more fun. Another pro is you can see where you're painting. So that's really helpful. 
And then the cons. You do have to take it off before firing in the kiln because it does create a bad smell and it's just not great to have those extra chemicals burning in the kiln. So that takes a little bit more time. Another con is it's going to get on your clothes and it's going to stain them. It might stain your brushes too. So you just have to work quickly and remember to always rinse your brush. Wax Resist Pros. It's really easy to apply and it's water-based. So if you get it on your clothes, it will rinse out and it will fire off in the kiln. So there's no need to take it off after you paint it. It will just burn right out and evaporate. Some of the cons is once you get it on a piece, it's really hard to get it off. So if you make a mistake, you do need to fire the piece to get the wax to be removed. Another con is it's clear, so it's a little bit hard to see where you're painting. I know some people will add food coloring to solve this method, but I thought I would just mention that. So basically, I love both liquid latex and wax resist. I will use them for slightly different things, but I definitely wanna have both of them in my toolkit. So there's no quick answer of one or the other. I really like both. I just use them for slightly different things, but let me know what you think if you have a favorite. Thank you so much for watching and I'm going to be totally honest, I'm a little new to the whole horizontal video format. So if you have any feedback for me, I would love to hear it. Thanks for hanging out and I hope you subscribe to see more.